All right, folks, we're going to begin a new section of our notes today. This will be on chemical bonding, and we're going to spend quite a bit of time talking about chemical bonding over the next several videos. So to begin with, there are two broad classes of chemical bonds. Those that bond atoms or ions together within a molecule or solid structure are called intramolecular bonds. Those that bond molecules to other molecules are called intermolecular bonds. And will be dealt with in a later unit. This unit, we will focus on intramolecular bonds. And there are a couple of different types of intramolecular bonds. The first one I want to talk about with you folks is ionic bonds. Now, in the last unit, we talked about what a positive ion was. We're going to review that right now. A positive ion forms when an atom loses one or more valence electrons in order to attain a configuration um, of a noble gas. Now, like we said in our earlier video, the term loses is not completely accurate. Those electrons do go somewhere. But in this context, uh, for this portion of our notes, I think it's appropriate to say that positive ions formed when neutral atoms lose one or more valence electrons. Now there's a name for a positive ion. We just don't call them positive ions. We call them cations. So a positively charged ion is called a cation. It's not pronounced cation, as some of you will like to pronounce it. It's pronounced cation. In order to understand the formation of a positive ion, or a cation, let's compare the electron configurations for the noble gas neon, whose atomic number is 10, and the alkali metal, sodium, whose atomic number is 11. So neon's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Now the sodium atom, its configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So it's obvious here that sodium has one 3s valence electrons. It differs from the noble gas neon by that one single valence electron. When sodium loses this outer valence electron, the resulting configuration is identical to that of neon. So if you can imagine that this electron is removed, so pretend it's not there any longer, wouldn't the configuration for the sodium ion be the same as the configuration for the neon atom? All atoms tend to gain or lose electrons to become like a noble gas. There's something very stable about a noble gas configuration. So when this 3s1 electron is lost, the sodium atom becomes the sodium ion, the cation Na+. So profundity, that means this is very important, folks. Metals tend to lose electrons to form positive ions. Another way of saying a positive ion is simply by saying cations. Now, like sodium, there are many other group 1 metals. They will always end up forming positive 1 ions. Let's take a look at the periodic table and see if we can figure out why. Here's sodium on the periodic table with 11 electrons. If it loses one of those electrons and goes to 10, doesn't it have a noble gas electron configuration for, like neon? Potassium has 19 electrons. If it drops down to 18 by losing one electron, doesn't it become like the noble gas argon as far as its electrons are concerned? Rubidium with 37 electrons. If it loses one, it becomes like krypton with 36. And cesium and francium do something similar. So the metals in group 1 tend to form positive 1 ions. 
the metals in group 2 will always form positive 2 ions. Let's see why by looking at the periodic table. If we take a look at beryllium, its atomic number is 4 and it has two valence electrons. If it loses two electrons, won't it have the same configuration as helium? Magnesium, with 12 electrons, if it loses two, won't it have a configuration similar to neons? Calcium with 20 electrons, if it loses two, won't it have its electron configuration, which will be identical to argons, and so on down the group. All alkaline earth metals will form positive two ions. Silver will always form a positive one ion. Zinc will always form a positive two ion. Aluminum will always form a positive three ion. So I'm going to write those on my periodic table here for you. Um, silver will always form positive one ions. Zinc will always form positive two ions. And aluminum will always form positive three ions and never anything else. All other metals can have more than one positive charge and their charges will need to be given. So if I look at the periodic table, all other metals, so let's draw a line separating our metals from our non-metals, folks. All other metals, all of these on the left side of that blue line that I just drew, will have more than one charge and their charge will need to be given to you in the name of the ion. So for example, iron can have a positive 2 or positive 3 charge. If it's iron positive 2, we call it iron and we put parentheses after it with the Roman numeral 2 after it referring to iron with a positive 2 charge. Iron 3 positive is called iron and we use the Roman numeral 3 after that, so we call it iron 3. Copper can be positive 1 or positive 2. So copper positive 1 we call copper with the Roman numeral 1 after it. And copper positive 2, you guessed it, we would call copper with the Roman numeral 2 after it. Tin can be positive 2 or positive 4. So tin that's positive 2, we call tin with the Roman numeral 2, and tin 4 we would call tin with the Roman numeral 4 after it. All other metals besides these metals that we listed up here can have more than one positive charge and their charges need to be given to you in either the name or in the symbol. Okay? Nonmetals which are located on the right side of the periodic table, easily gain electrons. You should know why after our last unit on periodic properties. Remember when you go to the right, doesn't the atomic radius decrease? So it's easier for those atoms that are smaller to gain negative electrons. So they gain electrons to attain stable outer configurations. To attain a noble gas configuration, chlorine gains one electron, forming an ion with a negative one charge. After gaining an electron, the chloride ion has the electron configuration of the argon atom. Let me show you what I mean. The electron configuration for chlorine is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p5. Isn't it one away? one away from having uh, six electrons in its 3p sublevel and being like the noble gas argon. So if we take a look at argon's configuration, it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. Notice it has eight valence electrons. So chlorine can gain one electron and when it does that, it becomes the Cl negative ion. And it also has eight valence electrons at that point. It becomes like the noble gas argon as far as its valence electrons are concerned. 
Now, the name for a negatively charged ion is an anion. So the opposite of a cation is an anion, not a dog ion. Please don't say that. To designate an anion, the ending "-ied", is added to the root name of the element. Thus, the chlorine atom becomes the chloride anion. What would be the name for the nitrogen anion? Well, some kids are going to say nitrogenide, and that just doesn't sound good. We would call it nitride. What would we call the sulfur anion? Now, by the way, the sulfur anion becomes S2 negative. Its name would be sulfide. Okay, so negative ions, we change the ending of the element's name to IDE. All right, so profundity. Nonmetals tend to gain electrons. Now, those electrons don't appear out of thin air. Please don't think that. They actually gain them from the metals that are losing them. So they work very nicely together. One likes to lose, one likes to gain, and so they work together um, in doing so. When they gain them, they form negative ions. What's the name for a negative ion again? That's right, an anion. Now, Nonmetals in group 15 always form three negative ions. Let me show you why. Group 15 is way over here on the periodic table. It's the nitrogen family. Nitrogen has seven electrons. Isn't it three away from having a electron configuration like neon? So it would gain three electrons and become three negative. Phosphorus has 15 electrons. Isn't it also three away from having a configuration like argon? Arsenic has 33 electrons. Isn't it also 30 or three electrons away? So members of group 15 form a three negative charge ion. Members of group 16 always form two negative charged ions. So we can see oxygen with eight electrons gains two to become like neon, and it, gains, uh, and it would be a negative two charge. Sulfur gains two to become like argon, it's also negative two. Selenium gains two to become like krypton, it's negative two. So members of group 16 always form two negative ions. And members of group 17 always form one negative ions. So you can see fluorine, is one away from being like neon, it gains one to become one negative. Chlorine is one away from being like argon, it gains one. And bromine is one away from being like krypton, it gains one. So members of group 17 form negative one ions. So that's important for you to remember. And those are the non-metals in those groups. Of course, the metals, if there are some of those in those groups, tend to lose electrons and form positive ions. All right, so let's review right now. Let's see if we can complete um, the questions that follow this periodic table below. So the periodic table shown below contains elements A through G. For each labeled element, state the number of valence electrons and identify the ion that will form. All right, so let's make this easy on ourselves. Let's go ahead and number the groups because that's going to help us figure out the valence electrons. This is group one, group two, and then, of course, we have three through 12 here, but there aren't any there, so we'll go 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. And as you recall, the last digit in the group number will tell you the number of valence electrons, except for the element helium right here. So, letter A is right there. How many valence electrons does it have? Well, its configuration ends with 3s2, 3p1. It has three valence electrons. Now, let me draw my 
little border in here to separate the metals from the nonmetals. Remember, folks, that metals lose electrons to form positive ions. So element A would lose one, two, three electrons to become like that noble gas. If it loses three, it would be positive three. All right, element B. Here's element B right over there, folks. It's in group two, so it has two valence electrons. And elements in group two tend to lose two electrons to become like the noble gas before them. So this is positive two. Element C is in group one, so it has one valence electron. It loses that to become like the noble gas right before it, so it's positive one. Element D. Element D is over here. Let's change our pen to red. There's element D right there in group 15. Doesn't it gain one, two, three to become like the noble gas ahead of it? So it has five valence electrons and it will form a negative three ion. Letter E. Right down here in group number 17, it's only one away from becoming a noble gas. So it has seven valence electrons. It gains one, so it would be negative one. Element F. Hmm. Element F is already a noble gas, isn't it? It has eight valence electrons. So it does not form an ion. So we're just going to put the letters Na there. Not applicable. Noble gases do not form ions. And finally, letter G, another nonmetal. It's in group 16. Looks like it's going to gain two electrons to become like the noble gas ahead of it. It has six valence, so it's negative two. Okay, hopefully that helped, and we'll be doing more of this as we move on. All right, thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.